Hey, well, good Friday morning. I hope that you had a great Thanksgiving. We definitely all have a lot to be thankful for this year. This morning, I'm coming to you from Northwest Missouri, just outside the town of Kearney, Missouri, where my mom and dad live. We had a chance to celebrate with them yesterday. And while a lot of people are out enjoying Black Friday this morning, I thought it'd be a great time to start a series on, as we think about it, our Black Friday of soil. And so as we think about what's happening right now at AgEx, we like to call this the foundation stage. The combine's already been through in this corn field that we're in. And what we're thinking about was what are we doing for fertility to really prepare for next year? I know that as commodity prices have come down over the last few months, a lot of us have been deciding what are we going to do with fertility next year? And I wanna take the next few weeks to really encourage you to dig into your soil health and what are, do we actually have and what we like to call the soil bank or the reserves in our soil. So this week, let's start to talk about some of the basic structure of our soil. So next week, as we dig in, we're going to dig into the fine details. I want to encourage you this week to get out and get some soil tests. The reason I want to encourage you to get out and get soil tests is there's so much good information that we can glean from that soil test to really prep ourselves for next year. When those soil tests come back in, some of the key things that I always like to start with as I've traveled throughout the United States this year is a series of questions. The first question I like to ask is, what is your CEC of your soil? That CEC stands for cation exchange capacity. Really, really long set of words. It just simply means this. How much positively charged nutrients can our soil hold on to? I'd like to start with that because I've been in some areas this year that have CECs of five, which is just a pure sand. A lot of people are going to call them your deep sands or your sugar sands. And I was up in Montana two weeks ago and they had some CECs of 30. And where I'm standing right now in Northwest Missouri, a lot of our CECs are going to be that low to mid 20s. The reason I like to start with it is that really tells us what can we be doing with our fertility management plan, because those CECs are going to hold all of our positively charged nutrients, our ammonium, which is our NH4, plant available form of nitrogen, our potassium, and a lot of our micros, as well as our base saturations that we're going to talk about, which are going to be our calcium and our magnesium as well. So let's talk about what do we want to do with our CECs. Well, first of all, as you pull out your soil tests or as you go out and you sample this week, our CECs are, I always like to say, give us a 30,000 foot look at what's happening in our soils. Because we understand what our nutrient holding capacity is, which we're really going to dig into starting next week. One of the next things you will see on your soil test is what is called our base saturation. Our base saturation really gives us the idea of how many sites on our, each one of our little particles within our soil are going to be occupied by our three main cations, which are going to be calcium, magnesium, and potassium. The reason that these become very important is it gives us what I like to think about as a 30,000 foot view of our soil, because as we look at the amount of calcium in our base saturation, it also ties directly into soil pH which we're gonna talk about here in a minute. As we think about the percentage of magnesium that's gonna be found within our soil, it can start to impact the structure of our soil and it starts to have that, that interaction with our calcium. And then our third one becomes very important for our soil tests that are coming up. And that is our potassium, right? Our potassium, even though it's gonna be the last component that we're talking about with base saturation, and a lot of times it's only gonna be three or 4%, when we really build up our fertility, potassium is so important when we think about water balance in plants, stress mitigation, forming a really good corn stalk so that we don't end up with lodging issues throughout the growing season. But again, we need to be pulling our soil tests because we can guess about what we would think it would be. But why guess when we're dealing with such large amounts of money per acre and we're making important decisions? So again, as we're thinking about what are we going to dig into and why we want to pull that, it's our CEC, it's our base saturation. Those are going to be our first two things that we talk about. As we move on, our third one really becomes, well, how can I really start to manage my soil health? And a key number that I like to look at as we talk about managing soil health is organic matter. 
Whether we're standing in a field, this field right here is a no-till cornfield, and we think about all of the residue that's going to be incorporated back into the soil, that becomes organic matter. Why do we care about organic matter? Well, organic matter does really important things for us throughout the growing season. First of all, as I raise my organic matter, I increase my water holding capacity. Well, why am I concerned about water holding capacity? Well, I don't know about you, but most years I run out of water in July and August. So anything that I can do to help hold more water is I'm going to find the benefit in that. And one of those key things is adding organic matter back into the soil. However, key part with organic matter is biological activity because biological activity is what's going to take this corn residue and turn it into a usable form then within the soil. We call it mineralization. And that mineralization can give us nitrogen credits. It helps us recycle all of the potassium that's found in the structure of this plant, as well as the phosphorus. So we can start to see already the importance of making sure that we get out and we take these soil tests. One of the most frequent questions I get is, what should I be giving my plant in the middle of the growing season? Well, I can tell you from personal experience, one of the easiest ways for us to figure that out is for you to have an up-to-date soil test. Because once we have those up-to-date soil tests, we can talk about what is that base saturation? What is that organic matter? And then it takes us into soil pH. And as I look at the initially at our soils, that really rounds out my first set of questions. And you ask, well, why are we talking about a pH of soil? Because as my soil pH drops below seven, and we call that becoming acidic, or as my soil pH moves above seven, and we call that being alkaline in our soils, it really impacts the ability of the plant to remove nutrients from the soil. If we get very far out of that about 6.2, 6.3, up to about 6.8, moving close to a pH of seven, we start to lock nutrients up in the soil. Just to kind of give you an example of the pH as we see on a regular basis, out in Montana, we were dealing or talking with some growers. They had pHs of 8.2. At a pH of 8.2, phosphorus in your soil combines with calcium, literally turns into what we think about as our bone structure, no longer going to be plant available. However, the problem also happens when we drop really low on our pH. And as we bind that with iron and aluminum, that phosphorus is not going to be available either. So again, we want to be taking a look at that because right now is a time when we can be putting on lime in order to adjust that pH. So again, over the next few weeks, we are going to dig into the small detail, starting with what we've just talked about today, so that as we move into the next growing season, we can help you understand what's happening with your plants and also help you place nutrition where you are going to get the greatest ROI on your investment. I hope that you had a great week. I hope that you've had a great Thanksgiving.